Hello everyone. Um, this uh, is a game that I had played and um, uh, it's from my chess uh, correspondence tournament and at the time I was rated 1757 and my opponent was 1537. Now in my last video I had talked about how um, I feel like um, my my rating isn't quite where it should be when I compare it to online games as opposed to chess correspondence. And the reason being is sometimes when you're playing these tournaments, um, the opponent will uh, decide not to play or give up halfway through and then one flags and gets the win and um, everyone's uh, rating changes. So that being said, I think my rating of uh, 1757 is uh, grossly uh, overestimated and uh, I'm probably closer uh, to an actual rating uh, with my uh, online games. Um, so that being said, uh, this is uh, the game I played, the Ziptor opening Black Mustang defense. And uh, the game uh, started as following. And uh, here um, my opponent had devi deviated from the uh, continuation. And um, you have uh, three main lines that you can continue into, and that's e5. Uh, there is a bishop uh, g4 and uh, knight uh, f6, I believe. And uh, I had played this move and my computer thought it was uh, an interesting move. Um, I am uh, better off in uh, positional play, but my computer had suggested perhaps d4 would be better. And I'm gaining uh, uh, more control over the center and um, compared now, um, to what I had played before, I do have the ability to develop my dark square bishop as opposed to what I had before, where uh, my dark square bishop isn't being uh, developed as uh, quickly as perhaps it should be. My opponent might decide to play knight f6. And um, I feel as though that if my opponent had pushed the pawn down, that they could perhaps uh, gain uh, some advantage in the center. Because you have the knight and the queen to support the pawn. And white really doesn't have uh, anything else uh, going on if, let's say, one took with a pawn, uh, black would obviously be uh, a lot uh, better. So d5 is suggested, knight e5, defending the knight, and also, too, uh, there is a fork here that, my oppo that uh, potentially my opponent could utilize according to the computer analysis. So now we get rid of the fork and um, I there's just uh, this to contend with. My opponent uh, might decide to play uh, g6, perhaps uh, f4 attacking the knight 
perhaps my opponent would decide to defend the knight. Uh, g3 might be played, uh, defending the f4 pawn. c6 might be played. It does open up a path for the the queen to um, to become uh, developed, perhaps. And uh, perhaps we'd exchange uh, light square bishop for knight. Um, uh, d3 would be played and uh, it's just um, white taking advantage of the hanging pawn and of course uh, black would uh, defend and put pressure on my uh, d5 pawn So my, my opponent would have uh, three attackers, two, um, two of my defenders. The uh, light square bishop could possibly come up and um, help out as well, um, trying to hang on to the d5 square. So we'll go back to the game. My computer thought that this was kind of an interesting move and I replied with an interesting move of my own by uh, forking um, my opponent's king and uh, knight. But my computer had uh, recommended that perhaps b3 might be uh, an idea uh, just because here the knight is uh, defending the pawn so black would have to defend the pawn, probably, I'm assuming, with the queen. If you did it with the rook and, uh, let's say, you know, the knight moves someplace and your opponent moved up with the queen, if the rook moves over, then, you know, you do have a hanging piece here that you need to contend with, but at the same token, you've gained uh, two pawns. And we'll just move along here with the game. And my computer thought that this was kind of an interesting move, but had suggested perhaps before would be better with the idea of advancing the pawn, attacking the knight. And perhaps my opponent would uh, push the g6 uh, pawn, which uh, does enable, you know, black to move over here and potentially castle uh, kingside as well. So even, uh, let's say, after this move, if I decided that I was going to push the pawn, black would probably find a way to defend the, defend the knight. As I said before, moving the dark square bishop down 
either to g7 or e7 and then castling kingside. And the game continues. And um, my computer thought that this was kind of an interesting move, but had recommended uh, c5 would probably be better. Taking advantage of the fact that I have um, three attackers, and um, of course my opponent does have um, the dark square bishop and the knight, and that's after um, potentially uh, this pawn coming down to uh, capture the pawn. But that being said, probably my opponent wouldn't want to uh, do something like that. And perhaps uh, waiting it out would probably be a better idea for uh, me to get over Zealous and just take the pawn. Because then black has a lot uh, better uh, chances at um, potentially gaining control over that um, that square. So we exchange pawns, and as you can see here, two attackers versus two defenders, and my opponent can't, could possibly bring down uh, their pawn in order to uh, gain another attacker. And um, uh, that being said, um, perhaps maybe I would have this move here. I just have to be careful of uh, what I'm sacrificing. So perhaps my opponent would um, develop their dark square bishop, allowing the king to castle kingside. Uh, perhaps I would um, come over and take advantage of the uh, hanging pawn with my queen and um, uh, perhaps maybe even looking at something like this in future once, of course, um, these two knights uh, vacate the area. There is um, probably even better than that. Um, would be um, uh, perhaps um, to a lesser degree if uh, white decided to let's say push the pawn uh, this wouldn't work out as well I thought it did in my mind but you know uh, if white moves up Pawn would probably come down, dark square bishop would go up, and then you have the knight um, attacking the dark square bishop, so perhaps an exchange of knight and uh, bishop, but don't forget too, I, ha I do have the queen, uh, so maybe that's not such a, a great idea. My opponent might come over and defend the pawn, and uh, here white pushes, and I believe the idea behind this is helping to uh, strengthen my uh, pawn structure a little bit, helping to defend this pawn here. Perhaps my opponent would uh, uh, develop the f6 bishop and uh, perhaps try to uh, exchange pawns, or if white decided to take um, there are the two knights as well that uh, help to uh, support that square. So perhaps we'd exchange pawns and uh, perhaps my my opponent would capture with the knight 
there is the potential threat here attacking uh, the queen if this knight moves so one has to guard against that and um, if we go back a uh, step uh, you can see here my opponent is targeting the hanging uh, light square bishop so white comes over to defend the light square bishop and uh, we exchange uh, light square bishop for knight and uh, after that perhaps my opponent would castle kingside so we'll go back to the game And with this position, uh, I was um, afraid that perhaps my light square bishop would get blocked in. So uh, that's why I decided to play this move, keep my uh, light square bishop out in the open. I thought it was a lot uh, more dangerous uh, doing something like this. But uh, my computer had suggested perhaps uh, taking the knight with the light square bishop King might come down to take the bishop and we have uh, the push of the b5 pawn you know attacking the knight here and should black take then we just capture back with the pawn still putting pressure on the uh, knight So perhaps my opponent would uh, come over and attack my queen. Perhaps there would be an exchange of uh, knight for dark square bishop. And um, um, just continuing with the uh, exchange knight for dark square bishop. Perhaps there would be the uh, rook b1 trying to defend uh, this square here. Perhaps my opponent uh, would uh, improve uh, pawn structure a little bit. And uh, perhaps even uh, pushing the pawn here, just keeping up with a better pawn structure as opposed to uh, what we had here, where um, there are two uh, weak pawns. Perhaps my uh, queen would come over, and I th believe the idea behind this is taking the pawn and then moving um, the queen uh, to this square, attacking the king. So my opponent would probably defend against that, and uh, I go ahead and I take the hanging pawn. So if we go back uh, one step, I did not uh, mention the fact that this is also what we consider a fork because I am um, attacking this hanging pawn. I do apologize for that. Uh, perhaps my um, opponent might develop the rook and uh, to me there is a uh, a tactic here well not well I had seen this but it doesn't make sense to just hang your queen so uh, just ignore uh, that completely that was um, probably one of the worst moves I could have absolutely made in history if this was a real uh, game. But if this rook wasn't here, yeah, there would be the potential of perhaps pinning the dark square bishop to the queen. And um, after the rook moves down, 
perhaps the knight would develop um, and I believe that the knight would want to reroute in order to attack the rook and uh, perhaps my opponent would move uh, rook c8 I believe in order to push uh, this pawn and if that happens we would get an exchange of pawns perhaps a rook would come down helping the queen uh, defend uh, the pawn oops so we'll go back to the game so with this move here I thought this was um, a pretty good move and because I am pinning the knight to the queen my opponent played this move and I opted to play this move so I'm attack I'm directly attacking the king if my opponent comes down to take the knight then I thought well then I just have uh, this move here attacking my opponent's rook and still uh, pinning the knight to my opponent's queen but uh, my computer had suggested perhaps uh, taking the bishop with d7 would be uh, better my opponent might come down and we exchange uh, knight for bishop and my uh, bishop would come up and attack uh, my opponent's uh, rook here and I still have the pin on my opponent's knight attacking the queen perhaps my opponent would come down try to uh, get this uh, late square bishop to move and uh, I am uh, defended by my knight here so if my opponent came down to take the dark square bishop, then uh, my opponent's king would be in jeopardy. So my computer had suggested perhaps I would maybe push the d4 pawn. Uh, trying to put pressure on this pawn here. My opponent does have this but I too do have uh, the ability to come back with the um, uh, with the pawn so my opponent might decide just to exchange pawns and perhaps I would push the e5 pawn uh, maybe with the uh, idea of coming up here and uh, trying to put pressure on my opponent's king. My opponent's king might fall back trying to defend and perhaps uh, my dark square bishop would come back attacking my opponent's rook and perhaps my opponent would just take the pawn um, thus um, trying to make the pawn structure a lot better and perhaps we'd have an exchange of knights and uh, if we do have an exchange of knights then uh, unfortunately the rook uh, would be hanging but when we go back and we play this move uh, taking the bishop taking the knight with the bishop is forced and the reason because behind that is um, direct pressure against our opponent's king so the king needs to be defended either by moving it away or by uh, taking the um, taking the bishop or sorry taking the knight Perhaps I would take the hanging rook at that point in time. My opponent might 
decide to try to uh, get uh, their king off the light square. And um, if we go back a move, I do have potentially this, which would uh, put pressure on my opponent's king, maybe offering an exchange of queens if it ever came down to that. Excuse me. Uh, again, uh, defending the king. And perhaps now uh, my bishop would come up. And uh, I think the idea behind this is just picking off these uh, pawns, um, taking advantage of the, of the backward pawns. When you look at pawn structure, uh, we'll just get rid of that. When you look at pawn structure, the pawns are typically strong like this, but in this situation, if you can get a piece behind it, you can um, uh, knock out your opponent's uh, pawn structure. And uh, perhaps my opponent would move down trying to exchange uh, dark square bishops, trying to maintain uh, pawn, a good pawn structure in the, in the center. And the queen does um, help uh, enable that as well. I'll just use a different color. So we'll go back to the game. So I did get uh, what I wanted. I'm pinning the knight to the queen, and also I'm attacking my opponent's rook. So essentially I have forked my opponent's rook, and I'm pinning the knight and the queen. My opponent might decide to move down and defend, and then again I'm still uh, going after uh, my opponent. Uh, the bishop is worth more than a rook, so it would be a pretty good sacrifice. Here I thought that I would um, just maintain pressure on my opponent's rook. And I opted to play uh, this move. My computer thought that was confusing, and the reason being is if I tuck it with the F pawn, now all of a sudden my rook is um, has become active. You know, and um, perhaps I could do something like this: attack my opponent's king, and. Um, have uh, the rook come up and then uh, perhaps put pressure on uh, my opponent's uh, queen. Excuse me, holy mackerel. So now my dark square bishop is in threat to attackers and I have one defender, so I have will possibly move back and defend my queen, attacking my opponent's queen. And then we might get an exchange of bishops, but if that happens, um, I'm better off defending uh, the pawn than I am just exchanging the pawn because I'll lose the exchange. So, Perhaps uh, my computer had suggested playing this move, coming up over here, attacking my opponent's king, and also uh, I would help uh, support my uh, bishop as well. I'm still going to have to move another piece um, 
there to help possibly support that. But if I can move my queen here, attacking my opponent's king, I get a tempo. The king has to be defended and will probably um, come down here, which will give me enough uh, time in order to uh, push my pawn in order to defend my dark square bishop, I believe. So perhaps um, this move would be made. And the idea behind this is, I think, um, just trying to move uh, the king, sorry, uh, the king to safety someplace. But you're doing it at the cost of the queen. So perhaps, as I had said before, queen comes up attacks the king, king's forced to move away, and then uh, possibly we would exchange queen for uh, light square bishop, which would be an excellent trade, uh, since the bishop is only worth three and the queen's worth nine, so you get uh, the better deal out of the exchange material-wise, and uh, my opponent would probably just take the Light square bishop trying to get something for its uh, for its queen. So we'll go back to the game. My computer thought this was kind of an interesting move. And uh, I opted to play this move. Excuse me, sorry, 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 sorry. The idea of this coming up and attacking the pawn, uh, don't forget too, we have um, this. So if we move the pawn first, attack the pawn, and then what we can do uh, as well uh, is just kind of move the bishop up and we get this attack on the, on the king perhaps. But my computer had suggested perhaps d4 would be the better option. Uh, exchanging pawns, the queen comes up. So now I'm developing the queen. And um, as you can see here, now uh, the attack is coming over on this side of the board. Perhaps the knight would come down, attacking my light square bishop. And um, there is the possibility of forking both rook and knight. But um, the way to defend it is just by moving the knight back. So now the queen has uh, pinned the knight to the king, but at the same time, um, defended the king. Perhaps my uh, king might go to g2, and I think the idea behind this is just simply having my rook come up, getting involved in the attack. Perhaps the queen would come down trying to defend the king. <clears throat> my rook would come over trying to add more uh, material to the attack of my opponent's king. And here we have the possibility of exchanging queens. And perhaps my rook would come up, wouldn't want to exchange queens, but perhaps put pressure on my opponent's uh, king. And just in general, the knight is uh, kind of buggered, can't really do anything. Perhaps you get an exchange of queens, still maintaining the pin on my opponent's um, king. And perhaps rook d8 would be played, developing the rook, um, probably coming down and um, I would assume trying to um, help defend the, the king. Also too, um, this pawn is hanging. 
which is all the more reason to bring over the rook in order to defend it. You don't want to give anything away for free. So we'll go back to the game. And uh, my computer thought this was kind of uh, confusing, didn't understand why I would do that. I'm putting a very valuable piece um, ahead. And uh, the idea of what I had was I had this attack on my opponent's king. And all I have to do is move the late square bishop over and uh, have this attack on my opponent's uh, king. But that being said, uh, there would probably be uh, an exchange of queens uh, just trying to lessen the blow because of, of uh, my opponent uh, being able to defend this uh, pawn, uh, this square uh, fairly well. So my computer had recommended perhaps this move would be better using the less valuable piece in order to still kind of maintain uh, what you wanted to do uh, as well as I do have the idea of coming up here with my queen pinning the knight to the king so perhaps my opponent would come down and attack my late square bishop late square bishop moves away to defend itself and at the same time, uh, as I had said before, uh, my opponent's uh, rook, oh, sorry, my rook is attacking my opponent's king. And uh, another downside to this as well, too, is let's say I moved over here. Um, there is the possibility of coming over here. And I also have an attack on uh, my opponent's knight. So the king comes down to defend the knight. Perhaps I double up the rooks, trying to uh, maintain control of, of this file. Because the king does help, um, king does help support this square. And I got the rook and the queen uh, ready to come over and uh, help out. Perhaps my opponent would play um, Queen E8, trying to help defend my oh, excuse me, trying to defend the king. Perhaps this would be an option. Double attack on the, my opponent's king. My computer suggests. And then perhaps my opponent's queen would come down defending both the knight and the king. So we'll uh, go back to the game. And when I was looking at this, I was trying to figure out, well, how do I mate? And uh, I'm really sorry. Um, that being said, I control this square, I control this, sorry, I don't control that square. Control here, this, this. So the king only has uh, two options, either to come up here or come down here. If my opponent comes over here, then I just slide over and it's checkmate. So doing something like this extends the game. And again, I'm attacking my opponent's king. So now my opponent, the only option they have is to move the king here. And then once that happens, it's checkmate. 
because I do have my rook uh, coming up here. Uh, the pawn does defend this square as well. And um, when the queen moves down, um, the queen takes away from this square as well. And there you have it, uh, checkmate. I try to always try to figure out, okay, how can I get checkmate? And in my head, I'm trying to figure out where my pieces are and what squares they control in order to try to develop, uh, deliver a win. Um, I hope you found this fun and entertaining. I do have more uh, videos on improving in chess, and I do use myself as an example. And I do use computer analysis, and like you see here, I try to uh, figure out uh, what the ideas are behind um, the game in order to uh, improve and uh, take a look at what I did uh, wrong. So. Without further ado, um, I hope to see you in the next video, and uh, thank you for all my um, subscribers um, for helping support the channel. I really do appreciate it, and uh, please leave your comments in the comment section. I'm always inter interested to see what people think of my channel. And uh, if you like what I've done, give me a thumbs up and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.